Hi everybody, it's Lace, and uh, today I was doing some crafting mentoring, and I will do this in pop-ups, just like you look for a group in hunting. If you hit Alt F, you will see that right now I have three people of eight, and you can see them, uh, and it'll say crafting mentoring in Diamond Fields. Now, what this uh, ended up springing to mind while I'm doing this video is, I've done, you know, hundreds of videos or whatever, and um, while some of the crafting ones that I did are you know perhaps a year or so old people might not look at them because they think some things have changed and they really not that many things have changed so I'm just gonna re-up my videos and look at it from a brand new player perspective and stuff and that's what happened with actually somebody who's been playing a really long time just didn't understand some some basic fundamentals and in uh, talking to them and typing it all out I was like you know what I should just re-up the videos and stuff so anyway, when, when I do this, just like when uh, you're looking for a group to hunt, you'll be surprised that you can hit the Alt F and find some people that might be mentoring and, um, you know, crafting or doing other fun things like fishing and stuff like that or streaming if you want to jump in their stream. Um, so Alt F is your friend, as the devs say and stuff, and I've been saying it for a long time. I think I said it before them, but hey, let's not debate that. Anyway, uh, Diamond Fields is a sub-POT. Uh, you can, it's near Elysium Mines, it's near uh, Jade Valley, Port Phoenix, Iron Gate, um, there's a bunch of them. Um, I'm not going to list them all uh, right now, I've done that in many other videos. But anyway, when you come in the zone from the docks, you'll run up the hill and you'll be coming right through here. And the crafting pavilion is here. Now the great thing is you can, you used to have to lug all your stuff here. And people would come every month for, for the crafting mentoring. But now you can just drop it in the bank and look, there's a banker right in front of the pavilion. So you can pick up all your heavy stuff, carry it in here, and get mentored. Um, so that's the first part I wanted to cover, is just how you can move your goods and services, you know, so to speak, uh, around the map easily is by putting it in the bank anywhere you're near a bank, and then picking it up someplace else, and then being able to uh, study under somebody. Uh, the next thing to cover is what is mentoring. Well, just like in hunting, if you're grouped with a player who has quote-unquote GM'd or 100 skill points into um, a certain skill or something, uh, you will suck in more experience into what you're leveling up. You don't gain experience or anything like that. It just means, let's say, let's throw a number out there. Let's say that every time you make a gold ingot, 1,000 of your XP pool goes into learning how to make ingots better. So if I hit K for skills, and let's say, let's go to uh, smelting, smelting if this wasn't at 100 and it was at 35 let's say and I had this turned on which is training with the green arrows training uh, you don't probably ever want to unlearn things this way because you will actually not get back everything you put into it there is um, there is a, a penalty for that you will get you will gain some experience from unlearning something while you're doing it but you won't get back in as much as you put. And that goes the same thing for hunting. Uh, and then the other option is not training. And usually you're, that's what people call locking a skill. So anyway, so if I had this up, and let's say it was 35, and I'm making ingots, and I'm under a mentor, when I look at my group, um, I have to use somebody else's uh, example. They're training under me, so right now they're being uh, mentored in all the things that we see here in green um, and you want to make sure that icon stays there when you join a group and sometimes if you're zoning around a lot um, you'll find that uh, it could drop so if that happens just tell the, your group leader and they'll kick you and reinvite you to make sure that you have that buff of learning the other thing with uh, learning and learning fast is if you go to the crown store I love that I don't have to go to a website to do this anymore if I go to the crown shop and I look for uh, guidance under other, there's an obsidian potion of guidance that you can get. And that lasts for one week. And what that does is it puts like 300 times what I can give you personally mentoring. But you only want to use those if you've really got a large pool. Now, my pool's sitting at like, I don't know, I, I know this is going to make some people go, oh my God, I'll never get there. It's very high right now, my producer pool, but again, this has been over a very long amount of time. I didn't just start last week. I've been playing for years. Um, anyway, you're going to want to do this. You're only going to want to use those guidance potions when either you're crafting 
or your adventuring pool is very high. My adventuring pool is, you know, relatively low for me because I've been training some things. Um, and again, I know I was saying six million is low. Don't freak out, okay? Um, but uh, so, so you're only going to want to use those guidance potions when your pool's, you know, really in the millions, honestly, to get the most bang for your buck for that one week it's active. It's far better than being mentored. But if you don't have a high one, mentoring is a great option. And then if you can do both, that's even a better option. And what that means is that if my pool was, say, six million, which they kind of call that the sweet spot, it means that the most amount of XP I can suck in per every combine or every skill hit or every spell I cast is training into my leveling up that skill. Again, though, if you can get somebody to mentor you, that's great. That helps. But in crafting, it's kind of more essential to get the most bang for your buck. And having that big pool means you use less materials to level up the skill. Especially when we're looking at, let's say, K for skills. Let's, you know, smelting is a good example. When I first do smelting, you know, I could make 10 ingots and get 10 levels. If my pool is nice and high, if my pool is down around 100k and I make 10 ingots, I might only get three or four levels. Again, I'm just kind of throwing out not specific numbers, but just to give you an idea. The higher the pool, the more that's sucked into your learning, no matter if it's a hunting skill or a crafting skill. So the reason I'm talking about all this is trying to get you the most efficiency um, for your materials. To me, that's the most important thing, um, especially when we're talking about enchanting or masterworking, because every attempt takes five ingots of gold or silver to do. And so that can be very time consuming if you're mining it yourself, or very expensive if you're buying ore and or ingots from players. So that's why I stress the mentoring and the potions of guidance and having the patience to let that pool build before you actually train the skill. The other thing is, is um, when we hit K for skills and go into, let's say, uh, the master working of carpentry or tailoring or uh, enchantings and alchemy, um, <clears throat> the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to need to get your base skill to 40. Now, an easy way to get blacksmithing up to 40 is by salvaging, and you don't even have to turn on the well, there it is the salvaging um, once you get this to 40 then you can actually learn salvaging and you can learn repair and repair is easy to um, up by uh, just grabbing stuff that you find on the ground and repairing those items or stuff that you fished up depending I think I don't like really th I don't think we get metal uh, gear from fishing I think that's only going to do your tailoring uh, repair but anyway that's a great way to, to work that skill and the higher your repair skill, the more points per repair kit you get in an item when you use it on the bench. If you're repairing items in the field, this does not come into play as far as I know, and that's still now as of R63. Um, for, for the salvage, again, salvaging, if you had this turned on and you're salvaging, say this is turned off, this will start going up. And it will, of course, eat into your pool because you're not gaining experience from doing this like you would if you were creating items. When you create items, not only if this was turned on to training would it go up, but also things will go into your pool. Now, if this skill is, let's say, probably around probably 70 to 100 and you're training it up, you're going to go, oh my god, my pool's going down and I'm not getting any experience. Yes, you are. It's just all going into training this. If you turn it off, you'll notice this number go up each time you make something. Now this brings me around to making things. The first time you make anything, whether it's carpentry, blacksmith, alchemy, any physical good that you make, um, even refining for the first time, like let's say if I go into textiles and pretend this was turned on, if I do fustian cloth for the first time, if I do a hardened uh, or no, it's no. What's it called? Carpathian, Fustian. If I make those for the first time, the amount of experience I get. So making one of everything is pretty important. Uh, you find there's a ton of carpentry recipes. So if you just get your carpentry up, go around get the spell or spells. Go around get the recipes. 
make one of everything, you'll net several million. The other thing is, is that there's variations. So if, let's say um, I have a recipe for bookcases, and I make bookcases from maple boards. That's one time. If I make bookcases from pine boards, that is a new item because it was made from different materials. Again, the first time I make it, I will get extra XP. This is what people were doing with the catapults, which they now nerfed. Um, with catapults, they were like a level 90 or 95 or maybe even 100 carpentry recipe. So the base, even after you made a whole bunch, the base was 1,000, 5,000 for exceptional. Every time you make an exceptional item, it's five times whatever your base currently is at. And the more times you make something, it drops to about 50. So you might get 250. But again, that also, <laughs> I know this is a lot of math I'm throwing at you, but that also means depending on the skill level and how much its base XP is. Getting back to making things for the first time, those catapults for the first time were netting, I, I think it was something like, um, I, I want to say it was 20,000. So in other words, if I made a, a the catapult, let's say I use pine bindings and a copper binding and then a maple board, that's one time. If I use the pine bindings, the copper bindings, and a pine board, that's a different time. So each time, that was two things I made, but I would have gotten, even if I didn't hit exceptional, 40,000 XP. And it was a perfect way for all crafters to just build up their pool by making the 216 catapults. Folks on the forum start going, how did I not know about this? Why do I know what he told me? Why was it kept a secret? It's never been a secret. It's still there for everything, for every other piece. They just nerf the amount that the catapults give. Okay? So you can still do this with bookcases and anything. Is change out the woods. Same thing with armor. Change out the binding. Change out the strap. Change out the base mat if it's a sheet or a coil. Make one of everything and do the combos. It's a lot more, um, you know, math or not really math but uh variations you might have to keep in your head to keep track of whereas with the catapult you know there was 216 variations if you think about 216 variations with a base minimum of 20k it's how every newbie crafter got a leg up you know and stuff uh, it, it's only really you know the first time was 20k the second time you make it and if you fail that's still counted as one time so you're not going to get that much on the second and it would keep winding down, winding down, winding down until the final outcome was 1,000 for non-exceptional and then 5,000 for exceptional. So a lot of people were grinding catapults and stuff because it was the best way to get XP. Um, and there's really no other way. If you go out there and you're harvesting uh, trees and ore, it's just, it's just mindless. So it's kind of a shame. And, you know, I'm going to lament that they took away the catapults because it was a great way for new players to get right in the game you know get get a nice pool get some things you know eight million is only gonna GM you eight things I don't see what the harm was and you know I'm sorry to bitch but hey come on it really was stupid for them to take it away um, it didn't hurt anybody it wasn't broken it was nice way for new players to catch up and they kind of took it away uh, you'll still get good XP but now you have to do 50,000 different recipes rather than just 216 of one to get a nice chunk of 8 million. Um, so anyway, enough about that. So just to rehash getting XP and uh, trying to build that pool and resisting the temptation to spend that pool as soon as you get it, especially in producer. With hunting, it's a little different. You can, you know, you can get up there and you can hunt and once you can get a UT group, you know, well, hey, that's a million an hour. You are never going to get that in crafting XP. Even with the catapults, you couldn't even attenuate in crafting. I mean, you would have to, maybe with the making of one of everything, you would have to have the perfect plan and have all the mats pre-made, all the pre I don't, I don't even know how you could attenuate in crafting. Actually, there is a couple things like um, the, the, the warlock chains and stuff uh, that if you just hit it perfect in making the three pieces that end up making the warlock's chain uh maybe then you could attenuate 
uh, if you could, you know, had enough stuff to make 10 of them. But if you attenuate, you want to stop, 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 stop. Because you're not going to get any more crafting experience. You'd have to wait another hour before you did it. So again, attenuating and crafting is probably very, very hard. There's very few recipes that you can do to even hit that. It's much easier in, in uh, combat. So understand... That crafting is going to be a very long road. It is not going to be instant gratification. And you're going to say, well, why should I do it? Well, one, I like to craft. Two, uh, of course the home deco part is pretty, uh, pretty much a no-brainer. If you have a house and you want to make things for your house, then obviously you're going to want to do some carpentry stuff and actually probably blacksmithing. There's some um, items from Alchemy even. And even tailoring uh, if you just want to do a display or something. Uh, they talked about, oh my god, I'm so happy. They just talked about this today in the live stream mannequins. If, you know, if you're, you know, let's say a tailor or something, you can put out some of your armor, maybe dyed all pretty and stuff. And uh, let me pop into just uh, something to show you what I've done before we had mannequins. Now, with mannequins, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Give me one second, and I'll jump back in here. Oh, actually, that was a false start because I forgot I was still mentoring somebody, so I can't. But anyway, um, in Brit Mart, I had set up, this is probably one of the houses that I put the most uh, time into, and that was trying to put one of everything into the shop that I was doing. I don't know that anybody really ever goes inside, and it probably was a waste of my time, but I tried to put a lot of different things, dye them and everything, to really make a display. Uh, when we get the mannequins in Q2, oh my god, I'm so excited. Can you tell? Uh, <laughs> you know, I can maybe even stick a mannequin outside my shop. I don't know how that's going to go on item count, on row houses and stuff. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was just putting it up on shelves and stuff uh, to display it. Um, there's also, for, for you guys that are fairly new to the game, if I hit M for map here in Diamond Fields, and I'm not the only one to do it. I think I was probably close to one of the first ones. So you can see there's my red dot. This is where I am. But if I zoom in, it's going to be a little thing that says crafting school. And uh, this is where I did a display of all the basic types of armor, all the basic types of weapon, all the basic types of tools. And around here, outside, I think, are the tools. And inside, there's a die display and stuff to show you the colors of the die, how they will look in game to you. And then around each one of all the different types of items, now, not every single variation because that would exceed the item limit inside, but at least I would do every kind of handle or every kind of, uh, uh, let's say if it was a, an axe, every kind of axe blade or something like that, every kind of pull arm top, whereas the handles would be all the same between everything that had a handle. So I at least did it once with every handle and stuff. So if you're trying to get an idea of what gives the, you know, different stat effects. And the reason that I did this in the crafting school rather than just doing a some kind of uh, Excel spreadsheet, when they make changes, it's going to update in here, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, there was a website that used to show the material bonus based on the type of thing, the type of strap, the type of this, and I actually heard the other day that it shut down. I do believe you can still find that in Soda Wiki. Now, here's another cool thing that um, I actually didn't know about until about a week or two ago. But if I type in backslash soda wiki, uh, type it right, soda wiki, and I type maybe the name of the recipe or the name of the so whatever item I'm looking for. So let's say, um, I'm trying to think of um, Shogun Lighting, or is it Lighting or is it Light String? Well, I think it's Light String might have picked a bad one off the top of my head but if I type this in like this what's gonna happen is a browser window will open up now you can't see this hold on let me change my uh, bandy cam to what it's capturing mm. so um, what opened up is whatever my default browser is it opened up soda wiki and showed the results for Shogun Lightstring so now I can say, oh, here it is. Uh, that probably was not indoor lighting. Oh, maybe it was uh, Shogun lighting. I might have typed the wrong search term. Let's see. I picked a bad example. There we go. Shogun light. Oh, I picked a bad example because I'm just getting all kinds of things. 
Ugh. Damn it. Okay, let's see. How about... Let's pretend I type backslash soda wiki space obsidian obsidian or meat. I'm trying to remember something that I saw. This is, I think this is actually uh, the one that, um, come on. Where's my little sword search? Okay, that's what I was saying. So now if there's a recipe for whatever I typed in, again, I did this in game and it opened my browser automatically and then gave me the, you know, the page matches and stuff. And probably if I, you know, typed it specifically re recipe colon and the name of the recipe, it probably would have taken me right to the page. Wow, this thing's loading really so slow. But anyway, now it shows me the recipe of obsidian boar meat. And then it will show me where I can get it. What the, what the vendor's name is, and these are NPC vendors and stuff uh, that I could get this from, and things like that. Another thing, again, and I always do this in other videos, is um, let's say I wanted to know how to make, um, let me try to think of something. Uh, no. Hold on. Brain fart. Ah, oh, crap. Makes it, well, how about bookshelf? Search for bookshelf. Okay, so now it says bookshelf is a re uh, carpentry recipe. Here's the little trick. If I want to know where to get it, this is always going to be in this little info box here. I can click on this and it will take me to where I can get this recipe. And uh, because the recipes are so spread out, this is how you can find where to get the recipe. By typing the name of the item and then in the info box doing that. So anyway, I just wanted to, oops, got my chat going there. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to go over. I did not know you could do backslash soda wiki and type the name of something and have the wiki bring it up for you uh, by typing that just in game. Um, that was something really super new to me. And it was pretty funny because last weekend I was watching or I was doing something and somebody said that in universe and my, my girlfriend happened to be here and I was, I was just like in awe of that. I was like, oh. <gasps> Because I always just have to open the browser, go to SodaWiki.net, type in my search term, you know, and that's how I would look things up um, and stuff. And so I think that's really freaking handy, and I wish more people knew about it. So, backslash SodaWiki space name of search term. Pretty easy. Um, I've also done some videos. If you go back through, um, you know, my playlist, there's some very specific ones that I've done on SodaWiki. That's just going to show you... Um, a bunch of areas that you can explore that I think is really going to be helpful, especially for new players, where you can look at old release notes and stuff, because buried in all the release notes is any new recipe, whoops, a little jump there, any new recipe and where they were found without having to go to Soda Wiki, and then also in the release notes you'll see things like, um, besides new recipes, uh, any tweaks and stuff, but you can just get a feel for the evolution of the game over time. And all that's been captured on Soda Wiki. Um, I find it very useful, especially if I'm like, damn, did I get that recipe? I don't know. What recipes am I missing? And especially for completionists that, you know, I can be kind of OCD about that. Making sure, usually when a release comes out, everybody goes out and buys the recipe. But what happens? The more people that buy something, prices go up. This can happen even when we, you know, we're doing our monthly crafting events, especially when we had like 30 plus people, our little crafting merchant here who sells things like wax, coal, you know, the basics that are required to, uh, to, to create things, the price would start going up. This can also happen, you know, it's also happened right at, you know, persistence in like places like Owl's Head. Coal was getting up to 16 to 20 gold a piece per one piece of coal. Um, but the trick to that is, is just go to a different POT, go to a different zone and get your coal there. Now, back then we didn't have the luxury of being able to dump it in our banker and pick it up somewhere else. We had to haul that stuff. And so probably some people were paying that price, but this happens on recipes. When new recipes come out at a release, everybody runs out and buys the recipe. And so while something might only cost 100, typically it'll drive up into the thousands. So be patient when a new release hits. You don't need to be the first one to grab it if you don't want to spend an extra few thousand on the thing. And of course, remember always that anything that's reteachable means it can be discovered. 
So if I, now, now going into that, if I hit B for book, and I don't know, I'm just going to pick something in blacksmithing. And I'm just going to pick weapons. Now, this is going to get me on another tangent. Back in, I want to say it was around R35. Before that, before R35 or R36, every recipe you could discover, all you had to do was know the components. And you put them on the crafting table and hit craft one time, and then the recipe would appear in your book. That's the same thing that happens with anything that's reteachable. So my big problem with this book is I can't see the quantities unless I get really near my screen because I'm playing on a large screen. I'm pretty far away. It's pretty light and pale. I, I can't even read these quantities. They've darkened some things up, so now I can see it's chunks of coal. And it actually will show if you have it in your inventory. So it looks like I have no coal. I don't have this. I don't have that. Anyway, uh, it, it, I think you can see if you have it or not, depending on what you currently have in your inventory, which is very nice. However, I can't personally read this. Digressing. But anyway, back to dagger reteachable. That means that if I put however many this is, it's probably one, one dagger blade. Uh, metal hilt, I'm pretty sure it's only one. Looks like it's three chunks of coal. If I put those three things on the blacksmith station, I will make a, a dagger. Once I make the dagger, it's going to appear in my book. So if I didn't have this recipe in my book, it's going to go there. The other thing with reteachable is if I um, hit B for book, oh, I closed that out and I shouldn't have. Uh, where are we at? Blacksmithing and weapons. So if I'm in a group, just like you would trade emotes, if I take the little picture icon and drag it into the trade window, I can then teach that recipe to somebody. Anything that says reteachable can be discovered, but also you can still trade it. Let's see if I can find a teachable one here. Uh, probably not in this. Probably, okay, there's one simple circuit, circlet. So I could teach somebody that recipe. That means they do not have to go out and find it and do not have to go out and buy it. Unfortunately, with the way the system is now, I, I can't have any idea if you know it or not know it. And I so I just have to drag everything that I can possibly teach one at a time. Same thing with emotes. If I hit O for emotes, now the great thing is I can sort this. So I know I can't teach any of those. Okay. But I can go to the reteachable ones and drag them one at a time into a trade window with another player and get them the emotes. The emotes. Same thing with teachable. I can drag now. With reteachable, that means they can pay it forward. Teachable, well, they get it, but they can't pay it forward. And that's the same concept with recipes. I really wish recipes had a list like this. Uh, you know, just a you know, just a list. And then I also wish I could multi-select and drag all my reteachables in there or whatever. It would make teaching so much easier. Because with the way it stands, and you know, maybe you guys can put this in on the forums. With the way it stands right now, to take uh, somebody's typical catalog of um, things that they can teach, it's about 45 minutes to one hour to teach one player. I feel like that's a gate uh, that's unacceptable to me. I spent the money to get the recipes, or I did whatever the work was to get the recipes. If they're marked as teachable or reteachable, why are you hamstringing me more to try to help somebody else out? Um, now, you know, people will, will teach them to you, but, but you need to be really Johnny on the spot because they're going to take, a, you know, 45 minutes or an hour out of their time just to teach you. The other problem is, is that before R35 or R36, because we could discover the recipes on our own without quote unquote buying them, it's set kind, some kind of character flag. So even if I have the recipe in my book right now, it's going to show us not, you know, teachable or reteachable. Where somebody else might have that recipe, and they can because they paid X amount of gold for the recipe, and they can do that. So you're going to find some teachers will have things, and they'll say, I don't have that. And you're going to go, what do you mean? It's reteachable, and you have it. Why, why can't you teach me? Well, it's because of how they got it. And I also feel that that's something that, that isn't fair. It doesn't really matter how I acquire the recipe. I have it. If it's reteachable, let me teach it. You know, well, not reteachable, but if it's teachable, let me teach it. Why can't I pass on, you know, my knowledge to somebody uh, regardless of how I got it? But again, that was, you know, that was a long time ago. 
But if you guys, you know, maybe post on the forums, hey, just if you've got the recipe, let's just freaking get rid of that stupid flag of how you got it, which is, you know, probably some flag that they forgot about, you know, in crafting, because we don't get all the love that I feel like we should in crafting, but, you know, uh, that'll probably get me some hate mail, but <laughs> that's just me, it's just like, man, come on, this is like low-hanging fruit, stop it. If, it, if the recipe, if I buy it, and it's, you know, teachable, why, if I discovered it pre-35, can I not teach it? That may have changed. I heard some people say it possibly changed, and I could be bitching about something that's not true, but I don't think it's not not true anymore. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyway, so, and and also, just uh, to set expectations, if you went around to every, and most, a lot of recipes are above banks, or a lot of pe recipes are on specific uh, vendor types in uh NPC towns, if you went around and bought all those recipes, I'm sure you're going to spend more than 1 million gold. So I'm trying to set your expectations there. Try to focus on the one thing you want to focus on first. Try to find some people willing to teach you as many recipes as they can. You're still going to have to buy some. Um, but this will help get you started. And again, when I talk about building your XP pool, while you say, I'm only going to be a blacksmith person. Uh, remember what I told you about making one of everything yeah make a little bit of the alchemy stuff make a little bit of the tailor stuff make a little of the carpentry stuff just to help build your pool because you're going to have those mats to do it so hopefully this hasn't been too terribly off putting especially when you look at XP pools and stuff like that um, it is a lot harder to gain uh, crafting experience than it is to get hunting experience uh, but you have to have hunting experience to really kind of almost gain a crafting experience especially if you're going to be mining or or things like that um, but again don't look at my numbers and go oh my god oh my god oh my god I'm never going to get there um, this is the basic thing to remember I guess um, that should be covered in this video um, I'm going to do a subsequent one that's more advanced but Let's say, let's go to um, carpentry and start looking at master working or something like that. So I have to get this to 40, okay? And then I can go and train this. You will train master work or like if we go into alchemy, the uh, enchantment tree, it's the same thing. You will need to train those and that's going to be at a crafting pavilion type of thing like this, but not in a POT. This is going to be like in a, a NPC town. And in other videos, I've covered that when you're wandering around the overland map, a scroll will appear over towns that are quote-unquote NPC towns or, or hunting scenes. And, of course, you'll start to learn uh, what those are. You can also go in, uh, in your browser. You can do uh, backslash, I think it's, or it's, it's um, shroudoftheavatar.com forward slash maps. Is it maps with an S or an M? Uh, or without the S. I think it's maps. I think it's with the S. And with that, you can even search for a specific town. So if I looked up in SodaWiki, I guess I should show that real quick. Give me one second to switch over to capturing that window. Okay, so yeah, it's um, www.shroudoftheavatar.com forward slash map. And this is going to be kind of what you see here. And this is the whole map of Novia as it is right now. This is, you know, pre-episode two. But let's say I want to find Diamond Fields. I'm just picking my own town. I never, ever, every time I do this, I always spell my town wrong. I don't know what that is about. But it's going to say it's nested in Jade Valley. It's actually nested in many, but it'll show you the place. I can zoom in. So I know I'm like around here. Whoops. But you get a whole overland map view. When you're on the overland map, you can also see it. But here, this way, if you know that you're over here, you can get kind of a relational thing that, oh, I need to go west or something like that. So um, anyway, when you're trying to find locations, perhaps for to get recipes or something, or even advanced trainers, they say, oh, it's in Ardoris. Now, I know Ardoris is down here somewhere. Let's see if I can see it easily. So there's Ardoris, you know. And I can even click on it, and it'll show 
all kinds of things that I can do about it. I'm not going to get into all that because this is about the maps and I've kind of done videos on that separately. I just wanted to kind of show you relationally how you can find spells perhaps that you don't know how to get or, you know, when you bring up the in-game map for the whole overland map, which is basically what this is, like this and you know you're here um, and, you're, and you know you need to go somewhere, this can help you navigate there. Um, a lot of people hate they have to go to a browser or something like that. It's not right in the game that you can search. I, I think that's on one of the Jira tasks, and I'm sure some at some point they can. Um, real quick, a little history about this. This was done by um, uh, Jacob. Uh, dang, why can't I remember his last name right now? I'm having a... It was uh, Jacob. Oof. Anyway, he, he basically started this website. And what he did was is do the map and then allow POT owners to go in and start setting up the details about their things, make the stuff searchable. And then uh, Shroud bought it over because he did such a fantastic Jacob White. Is it Jacob White? Oh, I don't know. Somebody will correct me on that, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, he did all this fantastic work with the Overland map and then make it interactive and things like that. So so they adopted it. So don't, uh, don't get down on the devs that you know it can't do this and it can't do that it, they they took it over um they paid somebody for their time and work in in establishing this quote-unquote third-party website and uh you know as, as as the game progresses i'm sure that they will uh, refine it and stuff but it's still a wonderful tool so anyway going i'm gonna jump back to the actual game one moment so anyway if uh you know if you've looked done the backslash soda wiki space name of a recipe and it says it's an airy and you have no idea where airy is you haven't visited it before you can't teleport to zone and that's another new bonus that once you've been somewhere you can get back there uh you're not reliant on a having a gigantic friends list or anything anymore um th then you can you know go there and then you just have to know kind of where the vendors are every npc town doesn't have every vendor marked you will kind of have to still learn uh, the actual zones. It's pretty funny. I was cleaning out my computer room, and I had maps of this mud I used to play called Dragon Realms, and where I literally charted out, you know, north, 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 east, east, west, on a graph map. And I actually just, it kind of pained me to throw those away because I had spent so much time mapping out areas. And this was, like, in the very early 90s and stuff. You know, there there wasn't a ton of internet usage exactly the way we know it going on and uh and <laughs> i even remember i had a roommate playing nintendo games and he would call the helpline for 5.95 an hour or 5.95 a tip it was back in those days when stuff like that was going on but uh i remember i mapped out basic areas and again it was a mud so it's like you can go north you can go east you can go west and, and I used to map it out, and it actually pained me to throw away my old maps on this game. Um, luckily, now we have far more advanced tools, and some of us are used to either having mapped it out or having in-game maps, because that's a big thing, is having, you know, that HUD or an in-game map. Um, you'll find that some zones that you hunt in right now currently, when you hit M for map, it does not bring up a map of the zone. Uh, the reason for this is, is while Jacob White's Overland map had the basic towns in there, um, and then also POT owners now have the ability to map out their towns and put personal tags on them, not every adventure zone ever got a map. Um, and you're going to go, why? Well, it's probably dev time thing, and, and I'm sure that, that that will get picked up. Um, it's extremely helpful in multi-level dungeons to see the zone connections and I hope that we'll see that at some point but don't diss the game on that honey because you know just just go back to old school where you had no freaking map all right just put on your big girl or big boy panties and figure it out and learn it I am the most uh directionally challenged person and I just have to visually see it to know go left go right go whatever to get to wherever I want to go um, yeah, it's nice to have a map to, to know I want to go northwest or northeast or head that way. But, you know, uh, I think one of the big game design plans for this game was 
and, and they spoke about this a lot, was to make it more old school and a little bit harder. And we've certainly gotten that. And they've caved on a couple of things because I guess, uh, I don't know, some of us feel entitled. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, but there are some, you know, there, there was not going to be anybody with a waving their quest flag and saying, hey, I've got a quest. Come here, come here. But that happens now. So you guys can find that. It used to be you really just had to go and talk to everybody to figure out if they had a quest or not. And the only way to keep track of that was by there was an option to uh, hide NPC names that you had not discovered. That's the only way to, that you used to have. And I'm not talking that long ago, maybe within the last year or so, uh, to, to even know that. So it, it's gotten a lot more uh, spoon fed, and some people are against that. Some people wanted it harder, and you had to discover and really play hard to find things. Um, and the maps, you know, you could say are part of that is, you know, having the in-game map of a particular uh, adventure zone level uh, takes away from that. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I got mixed feelings personally, and hey, I kind of like the maps now. I'm kind of, you know, like that spoon-fed thing. So I'm not going to complain. Now I just wish that all of them had it. You know, never can be happy, never satisfied, right? That's how all of us are. So, again, this was supposed to be a, a you know, a, a primer on crafting and just understanding some of the basics about how the XP pool works, what mentoring is, um, when you want to mentor or be mentored, when you want to get uh, experience, potions of guidance, and actually use those. Um, it's also was meant to help you. Uh, understand uh, some of your outlets for for information like on recipe trading and things like that many guilds will do that they'll do pop-ups they'll do announced events uh, same thing with the moats they do that too um, we used to be super heavy active in that you know at least me personally with prism and, and all my guildies always helped if they could um, my time's been kind of diluted so unfortunately I don't give as much as I used to I'm trying to get back into that um, that's just all personal shit, but, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so, so these are some things, please feel free, feel free to friend me at any time and ask specific questions, and I will always throw up a group when I know I'm going to be there, and I will mentor, um, and the mentoring isn't just about getting that little extra push of XP shoved into what you're training, it's about asking questions, you don't even have to be in the same zone as me, if you just want to just sit there and, and, you know, chat and talk about crafting and, and not only just listen to me, but to other crafters in the group. It's a great way to get experience. Sure, you can do, you know, do this in the universe and stuff, but if you just want to, you know, sometimes that kind of takes away from everybody's universal experience. If you just want to, you know, you know, chew, chew the fat or whatever, as they call it, and talk in a group, I'm absolutely open to that, and I absolutely will, you know, go through that with you. Um, so the next video, I like I said, I'm going to do a second one tonight um, just to re-up everything um, and get more in-depth with masterwork and enchanting and how that affects maybe how you plan your strategies as a crafter. Um, I wanted this one to kind of just cover some of the basic things about, you know, XP pools and things like that and where to find information, where to find help and, and things like that. And I hope this has been useful. I know it's really long. But if you watched it all, hey, good for you. Um, I really hope I've helped you. Take care, everybody. Happy hunting and be safe.